Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. Big updates for you. We have the state of Colorado saying they're going to accept cryptocurrency for tax payments by the end of summer. This is big news. The dominoes are falling across the United States and across the world. Um, we're also going to talk about Charlie Munger. He's back with another round of FUD, and he's, of course, Warren Buffett's sidekick, sidekick I should say. <laughs> and uh, Elon Musk is weighing in on what Charlie had to say. So I want to share the details there, um, and it, it relates to crypto and Tesla as well. And we're going to talk about the data around uh, criminal activity usage of crypto. Is it very high or very low? Well, I, I want to show you the actual data, and it's not what the mainstream media headlines have been telling you for years. Um, also, we're going to talk about some new crypto funds, uh, once again, raising hundreds of millions of dollars to invest in the asset class. We're also going to touch on Gary Genser, the SEC, Binance US, and the Wall Street Journal, and much more. Now, before we get there, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you're listening on a podcast site, please give me a five-star rating. Now, a quick word from our sponsors. First is Algorand, which is building the future of finance. And second is Taxbit, the leading tax service provider in the crypto industry. Links will be in the description for you to check out both. Um, not much happening on the prices, guys. Bitcoin is not really doing much. We're still seeing some sideways movement, and it is a waiting game. We have to wait to see, you know, is this movement upward the actual move towards the Bitcoin retracement, or is it going to pull back before heading up to that retracement point? I, I, you know, right now, we just got to wait patiently and let it play out, um, let it, this rally prove itself, right? Um, I do believe Bitcoin is due for you know a move upward, a strong move upward, but we may have to wait one or two weeks, but we'll see what happens. And <clears throat> as mentioned, I'm waiting to see that retracement up to about 55 to 58 K and then uh, subsequently a pullback and then alt season. But we shall see what happens, guys. None of this is guaranteed, but I still believe we are in a bull market. So we have not hit it went into a bear market yet, you know, where the entire market is going into that, uh, you know, 2019, 2020 scenario where it's really, really tough to hold through those times, but we will get there um, eventually. So we want to make sure we take profit. So not much happening from a price standpoint. And obviously we have the looming uh, negative news that could happen, like the Fed raising interest rates and also the Russia, Ukraine situation. So Hopefully, none of those things come out uh, or pan out and, uh, you know, they don't affect the market negatively. But once again, waiting game. We just have to wait and see. Nevertheless, the asset class continues to grow. Adoption continues to grow. Look at this. Colorado to accept crypto for tax payments by the end of summer. Governor Jared Polis outlined the plans during an appearance on Coindesk TV. Guys, this is significant. I want you to think about it. A state saying, hey, we're going to accept payments with crypto for taxes. And remember, remember it's going to start with, with, with taxes, and then it will expand to other things, other services that you have to pay the local government for. Um, and eventually, everything will be able to, you'll be able to pay for in crypto, right? This is just the start, and the dominoes are falling. Um, so Colorado will start accepting cryptocurrencies for tax and other payments to the state by the end of summer. Um, and this this uh, Coindesk TV appearance was at the 2022 ETH Denver conference. So obviously Denver is in Colorado. Um, great to see that the governor is, is making an appearance. Um, so for consumer convenience, we want to accept payment in a wide variety of cryptocurrencies as we do in credit cards, says Polis. The governor said Colorado is currently looking for companies to handle the actual crypto transactions. Uh, we don't want to take the speculative risk of holding crypto, so we will be having a transactional layer there, said Polis. Of course, at this point, it, it absolutely makes sense for them because of the volatility. Now, eventually, as the asset class matures and there's more liquidity 
um, it's going to stabilize, right? And there's going to be less volatility. Now, for you and I who are holding crypto in these early days, the volatility is great, uh, in my opinion, because you can swing trade, you can, it gives you opportunities to continue to buy the dip in DCA. Um, so uh, these entities, though, government and, and some private businesses, doesn't make sense for them to hold it unless they uh, you know, have a full cash flow coming in from other uh, avenues, right? Where it, this doesn't really affect their balance sheet, but for local government or state government, obviously they, they got to, many of them are operating under a deficit. So I understand that they will want to cash these the crypto out uh, it, or convert it into cash as soon as they get it. So Polis first outlined this hope to accept crypto for taxes at Consensus 2021, adding to his long history of being pro-crypto. As a Colorado congressman in 2014, Polis was one of the first U.S. politicians to accept campaign donations in Bitcoin. Guys, we're seeing more and more government officials becoming pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto. If you don't see what is happening here, I don't know what to say there is a paradigm shift taking place. Now, uh, on that note, because of this paradigm shift, a lot of the incumbents, the traditional guys are going bananas. They're getting disrupted. Disruption is happening. One such is Charlie Munger. Um, obviously, he's pals with Warren Buffett. So here's the headline from CNBC. Charlie Munger calls inflation the number one danger apart from nuclear war, war pans, crypto, and trading apps. <laughs> um, here, here's some other uh, quotes. Munger says he is proud of having not invested in cryptocurrencies, says it should be banned and likens it to a venereal disease. <laughs> These guys are so funny. First, you know, Warren Buffett was like, Bitcoin is rat poison square. Now, <laughs> Munger is like, it's a venereal disease. Man, you can't make this stuff up. These guys are, are mad as hell right now. They're getting disrupted, of course. Um, now, let me say a couple of things. I respect Charlie Munger. I respect Warren Buffett. These guys have made... Um, so much money than any of us or majority of us will ever see in our lifetimes. So they've been successful. God bless them for that. Um, they've really done some great things as far as investing. Now, as we all know, guys, uh, times change. And if you don't adapt to those at the times or, or you've been so successful in, in a certain aspect of society and investing in life, um, sometimes people put blinders on and they don't want to see that change, right? Because look at the amount of money and power they've accrued over years. And uh, I think time and civilization is changing and they don't want to accept it, but that's okay. You know, they've, they've done their thing. Look, let's be real. They're Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger probably don't have like a lot of time left on this planet, right? It is what it is. They're, they're older gentlemen and they've, they've done great work and I respect them, but they were late on tech, big time. Um, we see them now jumping into Apple, right, within the past few years, but they were late on tech. And of course, they're late on cryptocurrency, and they don't like it. It is a complete 180 from, of what, from what they know. Um, so I get it. But to see them come out this strong, and I tweeted about it, it, me it, it means that they're getting disrupted significantly, right? Money's probably leaving their funds and whatever and going to crypto, so they don't like that. And two, they're probably shorting it. Um, however, another aspect to this is Warren Buffett, you know, they just invested a billion dollars in Nubank. We covered this news yesterday. And Nubank is pro Bitcoin, pro crypto. So they're indirectly investing in crypto. Um, so I don't know if this is some smoke and mirrors move by Charlie. Hey, the price is not pumping right now, it's a little bit sideways. Um, let's put out some negative news here so we have a lower point of entry. I don't know. It, it could be, you know, these scenarios are highly likely. We know the games a lot of these investors play. They'll go on TV, put out a narrative, and they do the, the opposite to make money. That's been going on for a long time, especially with longs and shorts. So uh, once again, it is hilarious. He's likening crypto to a venereal disease. <laughs> Um, 
you know, when Warren Buffett had said Bitcoin is rat poison squared, a lot of people came out and said, yeah, you're the rat, dude. So that's why it's rat poison uh, to you. That's why it's poison to you, right? Um, now, here's something that's it's interesting. Uh, Blockworks, you know, shared the following comparison with Bitcoin and Ethereum's returns versus Berkshire Hathaway stock, which obviously, um, you know, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett are part of. The, the, from a five-year perspective, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's uh, up 87% return. Uh, Ethereum is over 23,000%, Bitcoin over 4,000%. <laughs> so you, the numbers don't lie. Um, now, what's interesting, Elon Musk weighed in on a tweet regarding Munger's quote about cryptocurrencies. He said, I was at a lunch with Munger in 2009 where he told the whole table all the ways Tesla would fail. Hmm. Made me quite sad, but I told him I agreed with all those reasons and that we would probably die, but it was worth trying anyway. Hmm. Another example, right? Uh, Buffett, was, uh, excuse me, Munger was writing off Tesla. And yes, were there headwinds? Were there challenges that Elon would face? Yes. But if you look ahead and you look at where society is going, where technology was going, it, it, it's not far-fetched or outlandish to look at and say, hey, there will be electric cars eventually. The technology will catch up. Now, Tesla was, has a good chance to do that. It doesn't mean they're going to be successful. But we know Munger, once again, going back to my initial thoughts, that they have him and Warren Buffett have failed when it comes to tech. That is not a, a high, that's not hyperbole or a lie. You just look at their track record. Once again, they were late to Apple or they were late to crypto. They were, uh, you know, shitting on Tesla. And look at how the world is changing around them. So, uh, you know, I tweeted to, uh, at Elon that Munger is like the T-Rex, him and Warren Buffett. In their respective time, dominant. They were top of the food chain. No arguments about that. But what happened? Things progress. Times change, civilization is changing, and technology and him and his way of thinking are becoming extinct. So that's what's happening here, guys. Uh, the world's changing around them. So, you know, some I, I'm covering this because, you know, some people who are new to the market may, may read this and like, oh my God, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are saying crypto's crap and whatever. And, and if you haven't done your research or don't have context to that, you may take that as gospel. I'm like, I'm not investing, I'm not touching this, I'm not whatever, right? So uh, just, just something to think about, food, food, uh, food for thought here. Now, uh, speaking of the times changing, Walmart board of director, crypto's potential goes beyond financial services. It is clear that a gigantic shift is underway in digital currencies and financial services, and the applications extend beyond the financial sphere, Tom Horton said to BlockWorks. So who's Tom Horton? Tom Horton is on the board of Walmart and blockchain.com and is a partner at investment fund, Global Infrastructure Partners and at General Electric. He said, I see blockchain technologies as, and as another great enabler, much like the internet was in its early days. Bullish statements, macro view statements, understanding the shift that is taking place, the paradigm shift, right? And See the, see the contrast between him and Munger, right? Uh, the, these guys uh, who are uh, younger, and I'm not trying to be an ageist, uh, who understand technology and the disruption and the change that's happening, they're on board. And they know that crypto started the movement of building the next layer on top of the internet, and that is going to be powered by blockchain. So Obviously, finance and assets are being disrupted right now, but blockchain is going to be adopted, adopted for voting, healthcare, insurance, and many other ways that we will transact. So big time statements here, and I, I absolutely agree with them. Now, the BlockWorks also did a great article here. Illicit crypto transactions hit all-time high of $14 billion in 2021. Criminal activity surged last year, but represented an all-time low of 0.15% of crypto transaction volume. So less than 0.5%, less than 1%, right? Um, and the media and mainstream media and some of these clickbait articles will have you think that, oh my God, we have this, so much illegal activity happening and 
uh, you know, drug cartels are using crypto when many of them are using, still using cash. But I just want to share this information so you, you have the data. So illicit transaction volume increased 79% year over year, while total crypto volume rose by 567%, according to Chainalysis. Cyber criminals have laundered roughly $33 billion worth of crypto since 2017. Now, in every asset class and industry, there's criminal activity. That is human nature, that people are looking to do bad things. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, crypto is inherently bad. In the early days of the internet, guess what? There were scams. There were people hacking, stealing people's credit cards. All kinds of stuff was happening. That is That comes with the territory, right? Uh, and you just look at any technology, right? When the car was for, uh, first brought on the scene, guess what? Criminals used the card to go, uh, you know, as a fast getaway from bank robberies and so forth. Did that mean cars were inherently bad? No. So uh, let me give you some more details here. Illicit crypto transactions reached an all-time high, $14 billion last year, but criminal activity share of crypto Cryptocurrency transaction volume has never been lower, according to a chain analysis report published Wednesday. Although the value of illicit transactions surged in 2021 from $7.8 billion the year before, these nefarious transactions accounted for 0.15% of crypto volume last year, down from 0.62% in 2020, the report said. Total transaction volume across cryptocurrencies tracked by chain analysis grew to $15.8 trillion in 2021, up 567% from 2020. Uh, here's a quote. Given that roaring adoption, it's no surprise that more cyber criminals are using cryptocurrency, the report states. But the fact that the increase in illicit transaction volume was just 79%, nearly an order of magnitude, magnitude lower than overall adoption, might be the biggest surprise of all. So... You got to look at the data, not with mainstream headlines. And, you know, they'll take some anecdotal evidence and say, oh, you see, this guy used uh, Bitcoin for criminal activity. That means the whole thing is a criminal activity, right? They'll, they'll do this sensationalized clickbait stuff. But just reading the data shows that even we, you know, we had a surge in crypto transactions. We hit an all-time low in illicit activity, once again, less than uh, uh, 1%, it's at 0.15%. So uh, look at this, 74 million subscriber HBO to release a segment about Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador next week. So crypto going mainstream, TV shows, documentaries, mentions on movies and every part of pop culture and society, it's happening, my friends. Uh, the asset class is growing in all aspects of life. Um, self-wealth to become Australia's first traditional stockbroker to offer Bitcoin and crypto to clients. Wow, guys. Um, and I think we've talked about it. Um, eToro, uh, no, no, uh, I forgot the, the name. Um, Charles Schwab, excuse me, and eTrade. That's the one I'm thinking. eTrade, Charles Schwab, and these guys are going to be offering it soon. Get ready. So Australian broker self-wealth taps BTC markets to offer crypto in the countries, uh, in the country first, the 11-year-old fintech said it had become Australia's first broker to offer cryptocurrency to its clients. Um, this is pretty amazing, guys. So, according to a press release on Tuesday, the platform has signed a deal with uh, one of the country's longest-running crypto exchange, BTC well, uh, BTC Markets. Excuse me. Uh, here's a quote: Currently moving between popular investment types usually requires access to multiple trading platforms for investors to move money multiple times. And he said, we wanted, and this is from the CEO, by the way, we wanted to make investing in cryptocurrency as seamless as possible. And this is gonna happen worldwide, my friends. Uh, we are just seeing dominoes falling almost every day and week. And here, here's another example, payments firm Stronghold launches $100 million investment firm aimed at FinTech and Web3. Guys, how many of these news items have I shared over the past just six months? Let's not even go to a year, but just over the past six months, funds popping up everywhere, raising hundreds of millions of dollars, all of it to invest in crypto. Uh, I, I, once again, if you're on the fence about this asset class, I don't know how you see this news and this doesn't 
uh, right away, it clicks for you and you, you jump in. So Stronghold Capital has already invested in Sam Bankman Fried's Almeida Research and Precursor Ventures. Uh, it says here the fund has already put money to work in, um, once again, Sam Bankman Fried's uh, um, item here. Let me jump ahead. Another early investment is with Precursor Ventures, which looks to take stakes in companies whose founders identify as women, LGBT plus, and BIPOC. I'm not sure what that is. Um, here's a quote. Stronghold Capital will create opportunities to develop new products and business models that improve financial infrastructure for everyone. Um, pretty bullish, guys. Pretty bullish here. I, I I don't even know how to keep up with all these, these investment firms and the amount of capital they're raising. Um, Twitter adds Ethereum wallet support to tipping feature. The social giant added the ability to send Bitcoin tips in September, but Ethereum addresses are new. So we talked about this. It starts to Bitcoin. How many times have I said that? Starts to Bitcoin, then they will go to all coins. After they, they've, now they've added Ethereum. Guess what? Eventually, Solana and the others are going to come. It's just a matter of time. So those of you who are holding all coins only, be patient. Uh, you know, and, and I know some people are like, oh, is it Bitcoin? Why is this start Bitcoin? Yada, yada. Guys, it's a pecking order right now because of a, a, the value and adoption and brand and visibility. So we got to keep that in mind. Now, Ryan Selkis, who I've interviewed on the channel, he's the founder of Masari Crypto. He's been calling out Gary Genser and the SEC. Um, obviously, ETH Denver is happening um, you know, as we speak. And he tweeted out, numerous high-profile international crypto founders have decided to skip one of the biggest developer events of the year, ETH Denver, because Gary Genser's thuggish approach to regulation. Is this the America we want to live in? We need a safe harbor. And he tagged Representative Tom Emmer and Ro Khanna, Congressman Ro Khanna. Um, and this is absolutely true. I agree with this. And I'm glad that more people of his caliber are tweeting and calling this out. He said, at the very least, it is worth demanding an answer from the current chair as to why he has purposely ignored a pro-growth, pro pro-investor protection, pro-common sense proposal from his colleague, Hester Peirce. Great question. Great question there. Now, on that note, you know, Gary Genser was on Fox Business. I know they had talked about uh, Binance US a little bit. And on the Wall Street Journal, big headline, SEC probes Binance US arm affiliates of crypto exchange. So it looks like they may be going after Binance US. And remember, Binance US operates under a DBA. I think BAM trading services is the, are the ones who execute all the trades and so forth. It's not an actual Binance.com uh, entity. Um, you know, it's very much a, a split off and, and they have to do that because of the regulations. So we're going to see what happens. Genser is trying to go after exchanges and lending platforms. He's got to be stopped. So keep tweeting, keep calling, keep sending emails, make videos, whatever you got to do. We got to slow the SEC down. Um, and uh, I, I think we, we keep putting the pressure. And remember, I'll be interviewing two former SEC officials. One, Joseph Hall, former SEC official, who I've interviewed already. Um, he's, he's now a lawyer. And then also former SEC commissioner, Joseph Grunfest. I'll be interviewing him soon as well. So uh, we're going to keep putting the pressure, guys. Keep putting the pressure. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.